This is a warning. What you're about to see is literally going to be painful for a lot of you, so viewer discretion is advised. Okay, day three. We're back. And I'm about ready to make the first official, well, second dump. I already did one dump where my buddy came, he had a truck, so we loaded it up, packed it, dumped. Now this one I borrowed, <laughs> just for a minute, I borrowed a um, shopping cart. I've been doing this my whole life. So it'll get returned, but here we go. So here we're all full. This is everything you saw in the last video that's going away. So got this guy, he's all full. You know, you'd have to watch the last video if you haven't, you'll see what's all in here. These are killer gators, but, you know, I'm not going to use them for a while, I know that. It's a wiring harness, but they're only 10 bucks, so. It's another thing. This is a condor. It's full of all military surplus stuff. Get it open. Uh, Well, anyway, doesn't matter. There's that boonie cap. It's got the wool glove liners. So if you haven't seen that first, or it'd be the second, no, it'd be the first video. You'll see what's in there. So that's being pushed back to the Goodwill bins. Again, reached out to people, especially at Goodwill, with the professional pickers that I know. Right, the picker, we go through the stuff, pick it. Super cheap, sell it on eBay. So you make your living. And I told him, hey, I've got this, this, this. But eventually you just run out of energy and breath to keep saying it to everybody. Hey, so I've got a storage unit across the street. I got a lot of stuff. I'm getting rid of it. How much? Free. Free? Yeah, it's, everyone knows it because we're only two blocks away from the place. Come on over, but Well, uh, maybe. You know, it's free. But that's how it is. Nobody... Nobody wants anything. What do you have? Then you got to explain, well, I've got some car hearts. I've got some World War II stuff. Oh, what kind? So you're sitting there for 15 minutes, 30 minutes explaining, blah, 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 all your energy. And then, nah, nah. which is fine. I understand it because I've been invited to people's things too. It's the attitude is like, I've got a problem. Help me. But usually that entails money. I've got a problem. Help me come to my place. I've got lots of great stuff. I'll give you a killer deal. You get there and everything is you know, 50 bucks, $100, because they're desperate, right? But when it's free, that's when it's different. This is all free. Come and get it. Well, when you're dealing with humans, it's extremely complex. Wendy, humans are very strange creatures. Sometimes when you say something's free, not interested. It must be junk. You know, if you've taken business classes, you learn. Free, mm-mm. $1.99, mm-mm. If you make it. $29.99, someone's interested because you're promoting value or creating the perception of value. Business 101. But then you've got people's schedules. Oh, yeah, I'll be there. At, you know, multiple people have said, yeah, I'll, I'll come right over. No one shows up. Next day, oh, I got busy. Oh, I forgot. Oh, blah, 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 blah. So eventually, my point of this is you just get sick of all the energy that you're wasting. So you just dump it. I'm telling you. Let's see what we look like today. So this is my system that you saw, that I live out of, that goes in the van. There's the second one that goes in the van, and these live on the back. They fit in the van. When I get to a spot, they pop out, and that's my living section. This is all stuff that I can sell, because I can get minimum 20 bucks a pair. These are all Carhartt. So those I can sell. This little guy I can sell. This little catalytic, catalytic heater. These um, muckluck boots, military, these are actually vintage. Not sure, I can't remember if they're from the 70s. But all day I can get 20 bucks for them. This is Keeper, this is my MMS sleep system that we saw. This little guitar. I'm going to get rid of it, but I'll give that to somebody. I know somebody with a kid that'll like that. And then this cooler, that's all mountain house foods there's my cook stove so i got to keep this that's my cooking system 
this we're going to go through today this we're going to go through this we're going to go through this i'll show you this is a um beautiful family heirloom that i've got it's exciting you'll see what it is so i'm gonna get organized and then show you what i got in here more show and tell more tragedy now these this is food these are all still good. Probably about 50 cliff bars. And this is all um, stables, right? So rice, beans, you know, stable food, beans. And that will all go to, a lot of times I just give it to homeless people. I'll just walk up and go, hey, brother, boom. Now, when you give somebody 50 cliff bars, it's kind of like, eh, it's a lot, but. Especially homeless people when you're on the street, they can barter with that. They can trade it. So that's valuable assets to them. Anyway. So let's see what's in here. All right. I know what this is. This is a um, beautiful tarp. I believe it's German. I'm sorry, not tarp. It's a poncho, a rain poncho. And I remember buying it. This is when I first started. And I paid 60 bucks for that. And it's extremely durable. Thick. It's heavy. That's a nice piece of kit. Oh, I know who will like this. I was told that my friend Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors and Survival in the UK loves the soft, soft camo is what we call it. And if you get the good stuff, you know, if you can find Sitka and the high-end brands, this stuff is extremely valuable. But this is all just stuff that I've picked. Let's see what brand this is. What is like Rivers West? Unknown. But I mean, look how beautiful these are. Bibs. These are real. These are Under Armour, so I could probably sell these. So these I'll set aside, but these two, there's no value in them and nobody wants them. So this, though, I'll put on the for sale sign. Aye. Beautiful wool. Some of these can have value. Let's see what. So these are um, German or Polish. Wilsch Karsch Schwarz Hockelhofer. Sounds German to me. Looking for a year. 82, looks like to me. Beautiful pant. And if you're in cold weather, those are better than anything you're ever going to find. Modern. Wool. It's all about wool. Here's a beautiful... Now these, I will be keeping, so let's see if they've got the wool liner in them. Because I'm giving away, I'm dumping two pairs, so just to make sure. Yeah, the wool liner's in them. It's just a special liner, because it's that way you can still fire your rifle while you're in the cold. So the liner matches this. So you've got your phalanges and you're able to pull the trigger. So that's the thing about this, you gotta go through. So there's a liner, there's a liner, so we're good. These are extremely warm. Again, the old stuff, bulletproof. Way better than anything you're gonna find new and modern. I guarantee you that. You're not gonna beat leather. Here's a military wool blanket. It's a medical blanket. Wool blankets. That's the sad part, because these you find all the times at the bins. Now, the Pendleton ones we sell, but this, the quality is just beautiful. And, you know, when you're buying those by weight, those are two bucks each. You try and buy those at the surplus store, you're looking at 80 bucks minimum. What's this? Oh, I think it's going to be another pair of snow pants. 
Let's see, oh, they're bibs. Yeah, it's a bib, snow pack. Very nice Cabela's. Nice pack. But again, I've got, how many do I have? Right? <laughs> I've got, right now, knowing. So one, two, three, I know that I've got at least five pairs of those. So I can't keep them all. Now what I'm hoping in here, that this contains my, okay, I'm back. I just had to use the bathroom, which is here. <laughs> if you didn't catch it in the first or second video, I was talking about being careful when you're buying these used clean canteens or now jeans, whatever, or military canteens because they've probably been peed in. Almost guarantee you. So that's my bathroom. All right, let's look. Okay. So this is one of my favorite pieces of kit. It's a 1950s, let me get the right orientation. 1950s Boy Scout bag. And I've always used this to collect basically kindling and tinder. Incredible craftsmanship. It was bulletproof. When I found it, there it is. What is that? A 574 Yucca Pack. But I mean, look at this hardware. Look at that. And the construction is just beautiful. When I found it, it had the frame, but I just wanted the bag. I tossed the frame. <clears throat> if I would have kept the frame, it'd be worth some money. All right, let's see what we got in here. <clears throat> this I've had since I was a kid. These are prints from the artist who they hired to do conceptual design for Star Wars. These are all original to me. So if this is Empire Strikes Back, I would have gotten this for Christmas in, I don't know, had to be early 80s. I've always kept them, somehow. They're still flat. Let's see if it says a year on it. No? 24 breathtaking full color. I wonder if those are worth anything now. I mean, they made millions of them. Ooh, here's a nice, I haven't seen this forever. It's a nice, um, it's my biker vest. That's cool. I haven't seen that. I didn't even know I still had that. There's my summer wear. Nice unit. I remember I got this on sale at a um, motorcycle shop. And I got it for like 50 bucks. Just a nice, nice leather. Paperwork. Must be important, right? Oh, look at this. I didn't know I even had this. What do I have here? Definitely military. I don't know what it is, but don't remember having it. Beautiful. That's wild when you forget what you've got. Let's see, we'll see what date this is. Well, let's look at the zipper. So I'm gonna guess this is, um, it's either gonna be Korea or Vietnam. That's wool. Beautiful. Didn't know I had it. I'll have to research and see what that is, but that's that's old. A wooby. I didn't know this was in here. Two woobies. Holy shit. Wooby Fiesta. I'm staying inside here because outside it's pretty windy, but look at that. Two woobies. Me and my wooby addiction. I didn't even know that I had that. But the sad part is I'm looking in here and I don't see any. 1944 mountaineering backpack or two native american blankets this is by a company called 
what are they called? Jackson, I think. Mm -hmm. Spy Gear, Spy Net by Jack's Toys, I think they're called. Jack's. What the hell? Jack's Pacific. Anyway, their toy, night vision goggles. But the computer that's inside, the technology they used, I'm not kidding you. Better than night vision goggles that I've used. I mean, full color, clear as day, and it's a kid's toy. So they're extremely collectible. People take them and then take out that sensor and make them into, I mean, you can use them like they are, but they're just a hard plastic, right? So if you tried to mount this, it'd be very awkward and there's no actual mounting points. But if you ever see one of these, I'm not kidding you. It is absolutely stunning. The quality is just wild. And it was a kid's toy from early 90s, I believe. It was an original Transformer. That's worth some cash. Who knows what this stuff is? I remember this. This, I believe, is vintage 1800s. I remember that. Kind of. And this looks like it's going to be a bag, obviously. What it is, I don't know. I'll take it out there and set it up. It feels military to me. But no World War II. 1944. Bag. I would never have gotten rid of that. And the two Native American rugs. But we got a problem. I'm going to have to do some severe digging at the places, well, two of the houses are gone now. That's disheartening. Oh, well, that's how it goes when you're, you know, if you don't have your own spot, your own house, shit gets lost in translation, right? And moves. Just bizarre. All right, I'm going to check out this jacket, look for a date, and check out the sleeping bag, see what it is. I'm hoping this contains my World War II. So here's the World War II. You can tell just by the build. So let's see what's in there. There's, um, that's just a rifle sling. Those are cheapies. Oh, another pair of Carhartts. Those I can sell. Hmm. I was looking for those. A pair of 501s. I've been looking for this shirt. Just a nice black button down shirt. Keep that. Oh, what's this? Is it another wool blanket, possibly? Let's see. Yeah. Told you. Here's a puppy. I don't remember this at all. Oh, it's an REI large puffy. And these are incredible, right? I always have puffies on me. You know, when you get these at the Goodwill bins, they cost one dollar because they weigh nothing. So I'll have to put that to the side because that takes up no room. And if you were to buy it new, you're looking at 80 bucks. This is an instant hot water pot. This could be good to keep for someone I know. They might want this. Instant hot water is nice. This will go. This will go. Yeah, so what I was saying before is somebody's going to score today. Because once I dump this, this will be out within... 30 minutes it rotates. Somebody's gonna score this bag, somebody's gonna score this soft camo. You know, that's a big deal for somebody who's just starting out. Or, like I said, can he afford it? So, this is all good stuff. I'd have to research these Cabela's, see if they're worth anything. The wool pants. 
I've tried to move these before. It's only if they're super old. You know, we're talking World War II. Um, I don't know. The Cabela's could be worth something. I doubt it, though. But these have some condition issues. You can see here in the crotch, they're split. So I've tried with these before. Not worth your time. Unless they're old, vintage World War II. Nothing. Now these wool blankets, like I said, I've got a ton of them. Okay, this isn't looking good. Because I'm looking for my World War II Mountaineering 1944. It's a nice Carhartt top, vintage. I remember getting this, this is like from the 80s. Carhartt is hot. Here's a Glock case, empty. Another pair of Carhartts. Basically all these, I've got a buddy. He'll take them off me for five bucks each. So, he can make some money on them. Oh, what are we going to have here? Let me guess. It's going to be another pair of Gore-Tex pants. That's your million bucks, yeah? There you go. Those look nice. And it looks like, yeah, so these have a waterproof seam on the zipper. Now, this could be a keeper. We'll see what's in this in a minute. Didn't we just give these away? Oh, Carhartts. So I'll keep, see if the guy wants these. Nice leather work glove. But the bad thing is, no World War II pack. Missing. It's just a wool blanket. Unless it's Pendleton, we're not wasting our time with it. How many millions of pairs of these do I have? I I didn't know I kept these. So this is a BDU. And this is just the digital camo. You know, pant. Kind of cool. At one time, I had every camouflage ever issued. Like, literally. <laughs> what else is in here? Let's see. Much of anything. There's one more box that might contain... The World War II bag, you know, where did it go? Where did it go? I would never have given it away. So it's very strange. Where the hell is it? Hopefully it's going to be in this box, but then I've got two vintage Native American rugs that are ones from the 30s and ones from the 50s. And when you sell Native American things or certain cultural things on eBay, you can't just sell them. You have to have clearance from the tribe. And it has to be, so for these rugs, they're called roadside, roadside is what they refer to them as, because that means that the tribe was making them and selling them along Route 66 or, you know, in the old days, a highway as tourist stuff. And that is clear, you can sell that. But anything that's sacred, that's used in the ceremony, you can't sell that. Now you can sell it if you, Talk to the tribe, because you find out who it's who made it. Talk to them, and if they give you permission, you can sell it. But then in that situation, the right thing to do is to give it to them. Which I tried to do with one piece that I did find. I sent it to a woman who works at a museum. I said, do you know what this is? Boom, came back, here's the name of the tribe, boom. There, I contacted the tribe, I said, hey, I found this, and I want to give it to you. Because that's not right to be selling their artifacts, right? Because they've already, you know, had all of their land stolen, been raped, pillaged, and murdered, genocide. <laughs> so you do what you want to do, but I'm not going there. Bad energy. And I contacted them, sent them pictures, and they go, no, 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 we don't want it. You just go ahead and sell it. You've got our blessing. I said, okay, 
Well, I never sold it. I've got it here somewhere. Hopefully. So. I'll move some stuff and we'll get into this next box, see what we can find. Just open up this haversack and I remember this. This is years ago I found this one. We, we, I was unable to, you know, I have a group of friends and we all picked this World War II stuff. But we were unable to determine what this was. It's definitely old. But no markings. And the way it's built. <coughs> and the way this is built, this does not look American. We were thinking German, Polish, Italian. If anybody knows what it is. And then here's the World War II bag, the haversack. And this one I think is stamped 44. Gorgeous bag. And then here, this is a World War II canteen. Let's see what it says. Pick it up. I'm looking over the camera. Mm. To, I think it's 44. 1944. But here's a nice, oh, it's got the belt too. Beautiful. And the canteen. And the canteen cup. This is all World War II. But this is very valuable stuff. I mean, I keep it all. But these kind of things, they don't go anywhere. There's another one, World War II. What does that say? 44? Hard to see in this light. So rest assured, this stuff will be saved. You know, there's limits. <laughs> it's just bad, bad mojo. You don't throw that stuff away. Not throw it away, but you don't just dump that at Goodwill. And that's why I found it. So I'm extremely fortunate. But you put the time into that. I've got friends that collect because we're trying to preserve this stuff for future generations, if there are any. Highly doubtful, but, you know, you put the time in to make sure that gets a home. If not, I don't know, put it on eBay for a buck. Just make sure somebody gets it. You don't trash that stuff. Okay, we're getting down to the final box here. Hoping that this military backpack's in there. Now this... I put it in here on purpose. This is all original 1977 Star Wars. These are all my toys when I was little. So these are all original 1977. Beautiful, huh? And these are mine. When I was little. That's how long I've kept them. This takes a lot of research and time to find out what's what. Was it Jenner? Was it Kenner? Was it blah, blah? You know, who knows? Who knows what's what? Got to put a lot of research into it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Little Ewok. No, not Ewok. What were these called? Jabberwocky? Sand people? Sand people, maybe? Can't remember this guy's name. But... Some of this stuff can be extremely valuable. This has to be the right, right thing at the right place at the right time. Pig face. I don't know what he's got. Anyway, pretty cool that it's lasted 52 years. Well, not 52. Ooh, there's Darth Vader. I'm taking a break. It was funny because when you're watching this, I've already posted number one and number two of this. Part one and part two. So I've been responding to comments and it's a universal thing, right? We're, well, not universal, but a lot of people have been in the same situation. And as I'm responding to some of the comments, I realize this is the third time I've done this, right? Years and years ago, 20 years ago, I did the same thing with if it was motorcycle stuff because I 
lived on a motorcycle for three years. So I had, you know, three rain gear things, three extra fenders, three extra, you know, when you find stuff, you, and I did the same thing 25 years ago. And then I think it would have been, I don't know, six years ago, I had the same amount of stuff stacked in a garage and same thing to the ceilings, just like this. And now this one. This one was different because I was out of the country. I wasn't anywhere and I've got certain things that I can't just leave at someone's house, right? You can't just leave them around. So having my own place where things are secure, very important. But it was just funny to think, you know, you repeat, history repeats itself always. You don't, you know, learn your lesson. Because what was always behind this if you knew how many bug out bags I've built for people, right? My whole family, I built for five different people, complete bug out bags for a kid who was at the time, you know, six years old. So that's a kid's sleeping blanket, a kid's backpack, a kid's, you know, everything. That's extremely intense picking and months and months of putting together this kit. And then for an adult who's oversized, six foot five and 350 pounds, so I'm, again, extreme picking because it's, you know, you, you can't just use a normal sleeping bag. So boom, you score that XXL sleeping bag, XXL bag, backpack, et cetera, et cetera. The clothing, XXL. So that takes a lot of time. That's months and months of picking and, you know, you're going to find it rarely, but you find it. Boom. Put together all these kits. I think I even, I wouldn't say I had a party, but I made the announcement. Hey, I've got something for you and brought it out. Ah, here it is. And went through, ah. And, you know, just crickets. Not something. What was hilarious is one of them was for my parents who were in their 80s. And I said, come on, if something happens, you know, blah, blah. And my mom said, well, if there's a nuclear war, I hope I die instantly. You know, and that I understand it. She's pretty right. You know, if a nuclear war happened, do you really want to be around with that radiation and that destruction and devastation and anarchy? I don't think I want to be. Anyway, it's just funny. <laughs> so there was always a point behind a lot of this stuff, you know. I've used the hoarding in the title and stuff. Again, I don't consider some, myself a hoarder. One, because it's a 10 by 10 foot space. That's, you know, it's very small. But I've worked with hoarders and tried to help them. And these are people that are in counseling for it, literally. These are very wealthy people, actually. But where they, they've had, you know, interventions and shit. <laughs> because it's gone out of control. It's houses and houses and houses all over. Filled. You know, you go to see this multi-million dollar house in Malibu. Overlooking the cliff on Zuma. It's a mansion. That's worth, you know. I think at the time it was worth 17 million dollars. Huge. With a horse. Ranch and guest houses. Tennis courts. Pools. All the stuff. And the thing was loaded. You could, could even walk just little pathways, packed. And the guy, you know, he had a couple more of those. So, it's not much of a problem. And the biggest reason why is because if you're working with a hoarder, getting rid of the stuff is an absolute, it's extremely chaotic. The day that things are being, okay, let's do it, time to go. Watch the show, what's it called? buried alive or something hoarders edition and you can see you know they can't get rid of it because that's the addiction you know this one thing okay well here you go you've got you've got 500 of these so let's get rid of you know for now let's get rid of 400 of them and you I can't, you know because that's the mental addiction so anyway me you know i go ah oh well boom it's gone i don't care and then the other thing that i had to make clear when I talk about dumping it in the garbage, some of it is going in the garbage, but some things, if you're a picker, okay, and you're at the Goodwills and you're picking and you've done it for 25 years, you have this innate or this thing that's bred into you where, so what most of us do is we list things and we have a timeline. So it's usually seven days because you've got limited space, right? And so you're trying to move the stuff. If it doesn't move, 
boom, you pull it. And what breaks your heart is giving it back to the goodwill, right? So you load up your car and you, and the day, you know, cause you're picking at the goodwill. So you drive, park, before you go in, you dump everything that didn't sell and go back in. But there's a big stigma about it where you go, I don't want to give it back to them. No, no way. Cause you paid for it. And now you're giving it back and they're going to sell it again and make more money off you. <laughs> but I know people that have literally dumped it in the garbage because of that. They go, uh, uh, not giving it back to them. Right? It's this love hate relationship. But the reality is all this stuff will go back right now. And somebody else may have a use for it. You know, someone that just needs one, it's a mega score for them. So you're, you know, it's important to share the stuff. That's a big part of it. All these things are just ours while we're alive and whatever, but you know, just give the stuff away. Does that make sense? Because somebody else will need that bag and they'll, it'll be a mega score. Oh my God. You know, and maybe that gets them into camping and bushcraft and survival and whatever, because they scored that killer bag. Anyway, just a thought. All right, time to go back in. Okay, so I laid the bag out. It's a duck feather. It's World War II. I know that for sure. But I was able to see the date. And it is extremely hard to read, but it's 1943. Let's see if we can pick that up. Can you see that? 43? December 19th, 1943. Beautiful bag. Again, didn't know I had it. So these are definitely, the truth is they're not worth much money, but I mean, look at the craftsmanship on this. Just gorgeous. And to think where this has been. Here we go. T. Smith. Say a prayer for T. Smith. Hopefully he made it. But what a beautiful bag. Duck feather and zero smell. Because you'll find this stuff. You know, when you're picking, you got to put in the time. So when it comes up and people go, oh, you got that stuff, yeah. Lucky you, blah, blah, blah. I always let people know that's bullshit. It's a lot of work. It's a full-time job. You're out there 10 hours a day. I average five to eight miles a day on my pedometer meter. Walking. You're always moving and the research and the shipping and blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't end. It's a lot of work. So when you score this stuff, you've earned it. Trust me. But the resale market on that isn't really hot. But I will find a home for it. So there's only one le one left one last thing to show you before I wrap this up for the day because I got to go dump this stuff before they close. This I was hoping is still around. This is these are my grandpa's knives. But these are going to be. I think these are Boy Scout here. Can't tell. But I've had these my whole life. And these are going to all be vintage because these are going to be from, you know, from him, from his father. So these are early 1900s. Here's a Boy Scout. Beautiful. I mean, the quality, just touching them is just magical. I wish you could feel it. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, I remember I found this. It was on, or it was a corkscrew for wine. There's the handle, it's bone. So those are beautiful. Good to know I still have those. These are old VHS tapes. Can you stop? These are old VHS tapes of things I filmed in high school and middle school. A little Raggedy Ann. That I won't show you. An old Sony Walkman. Transformers, I was... I don't know why I have these. This would have been... I was doing these for quite a while. These can be extremely valuable. Here's my old phone. What is that, the iPhone? No idea. Old hard drive. I know that videos are on there. My like deleted channel. This is 999 silver, I believe. Bag bomb. 
This I keep, it's sentimental. I use this on a cat. It's no longer here. And I've always kept it because there's hairs in here. I think these are the original tuning pegs off my grandpa, great grandpa's guitar. It's from the late 18, 1800s. But I still have. It's the tuning pegs. They're all ivory. Here's me. I look pretty much the same. This, my uncle was a fighter pilot in the Air Force. And I got this, I believe, from him. It's always been around. Pretty cool. This is the tie that my father was married in in 1959. No, maybe before that. I've always kept it. I've worn it my whole life. Just a beautiful tie and, you know, wild to think. This was his tie that he was wearing when he got married to my mother. The sentimental stuff. So here's this World War, or military jacket. I'm thinking it's Korean War. But the wild thing is I cannot find a single stamp or tag on it. And that doesn't exist. If it's military, it's got a contracting number on it. Excuse me, if it's from World War II, it'd have a stamp, right? Because they weren't doing the con the tags yet. But everything must be, it has to be identified. And I can tell this snap, that's got to be later than World War II. I'm thinking Korea. Maybe Vietnam, but Vietnam, Korea, World War II, you know, the stuff just keeps moving. But it's a beautiful jacket. I don't know if you can see, but it's lined with wool. Extremely soft. Love it. It's an old, um, what is that? Casio Tone MT36. I just pulled it out of the corner. It fell from the very top. Let's see if she comes alive. It took a hard fall. It was up here, so it fell easily five, six feet. Yeah, still going. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> well, the batteries just died, but these are tough. This is from what? I bet this is the early 80s. I know somebody who'll like that. Let me give that away. And this is it. So we got to get this out and see what's in there. Okay, last thing before we go, I promise you I'd show you this. This is my grandpa's Marlin 88, or was it a Marlin B88? And I know he purchased this new from Sears and Roebuck. I have the advertisement. I don't know where it is, but... And it was new for, I think it was $29.99, brand new. And in my research over the years, I was told this was the first ass-loading <laughs> weapon that was mass-produced. So basically, it's a 22 long rifle, and you load it from here, up the buttstock. So you literally, it takes, I think, 13. You put them in here, and you close this, and you're good to go. Then you would charge it. There you go. Just a beautiful, if you can feel this. I mean, look at that work. Gorgeous. All right, I'm locking up. I'm going to put this away and catch you at the bins when I'm dumping this. So all of this is being dumped. Adios. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. Dead man walking. All right. Moment of truth. This is the end of the line. Dumping it at the bins. We'll find a new home. Don't worry.
Every single thing you see here is from Goodwill. So it's all coming back. All right, just like that, gone. So there's a scale, so I think that weighed 130 pounds, I'm pretty sure. I didn't get to see it clearly because they take it real quick. But what's wild is if I go in there right now, okay? So if I go in there, this is where you drop off. There's the door. So if I go in there, that's gonna be out on the floor within minutes, because they're moving fast right now, so be real quick somebody else will be having a great day scoring some cool stuff that makes you feel good anyway that's all for today